Hey guys, it's Katie, and today I'm gonna to go over how we did at the Iowa State Fair competition. Now, most people don't even realize that shearing sheep is a career opportunity, nonetheless a sport, but it's widely celebrated across the world. And even once a year, countries will gather together to compete to see who can shear the fastest and cleanest sheep. Now, that's not the kind of competition I went to. I went to a much smaller one, but in this video, I'm gonna break down how it works and really how we did. Hope you all enjoy. How's it going y'all? I'm Katie, and this is my wife Darian, and together we make the team at Right Toy Shearing. We shear llamas, alpacas, and sheep, but our real passion is spreading knowledge about our industry. You never know what we'll see at the next job, but it's sure to be satisfying and absolutely adorable. So join us as we travel nine states and service thousands of animals. Welcome to the party! We hope you stick around. On the day of the competition, I start by setting up my handpiece. It's standard to use a 13 tooth comb, and I personally decided to use a long bevel. That way, if I encountered any sticky sheep, I would breeze right through them. It's important to make sure that my blades are on precisely. Being off just a little bit at this stage could be enough to snag the sheep and nick it. Not something we want at any time, nonetheless a competition. During the event, you're allowed to have two set up hand pieces in case there is a malfunction or a sharpening issue with one. So I go ahead and set both of mine up so I'm prepared. Now that we're ready, let's take a look at how the competition works. Four shears at a time will be on the shearing floor. Each one will have their own pen of equal number of sheep. The lambs begin in an exterior holding pen and are herded up the ramp and then divided into the appropriate number of head per pen. The competitor begins by opening the swing gate and grabbing a sheep. Each pen has an assistant who brings the sheep to the door so that there is no chasing and working the animal up. This is the only way that the assistant may help. But now that we have our sheep, what are the judges looking for? Scoring is broke down into three different sections, time, board points, and pen points, each one with the goal of having the lowest number. Both board and pen points focus on quality. That means that the points are made up more of quality than they are time. So just because you shear the fastest sheep doesn't mean you did the best job. This is a list of what the board judges are looking for. Board judges are the ones that walk around the shearing floor while the shearers compete, looking for any imperfections in the way that they remove the fleece. This list is quite in depth, but all you really need to know is they're watching to make sure that there are no second cuts and that the sheep are being handled appropriately because there is no tolerance for mishandling animals. To better explain, I went ahead and got some footage of a comparable lamb at a client's house. The basics of this pattern is used globally, and the first step is to remove a clean belly, and make sure you throw that out. Belly wool is lower quality fiber because of all of the dirt and debris they collect when they lay down. It is essential that it is bagged differently in the sheds, and there is no exception for the competition floor. Another important step is to clean off the legs and hocks very well. This will be a show lamb, and she needs to keep the fiber on the bottom of her leg, so I will not be removing that. Since I do so many show lambs, this is a habit of mine and honestly probably hindered me in the competition. Again, the number one thing that the judges are looking for are second cuts. The idea is that all the fiber will come off of one area in one smooth blow. This helps with the processing, keeping all the tiny useless things out of the wool. This tends to be more difficult in lambs because they have tiny little bodies as compared to a mature sheep. In fact, if we zoom in and slow down this next blow, you can see how I left a little piece behind and have to go back and clean that up. To me, the obvious question is, why not leave it behind if the board judges are watching for that? That's because penalties on the board for second cuts are exactly equal to the penalties inside of the pens for second cuts, so it doesn't matter when it happens, it needs to be removed. Let's return back to the shearing competition where one of my friends, Catherine Mosier, is finishing up her sheep. Catherine is an amazing shearer, and after winning the last beginner's competition, she's here this year to play with the pros. She even made it into the semifinals and ended up in eighth place. Way to go, Catherine. If you enjoy compassionate, heartwarming shearing content, you should definitely go check her out at U42 on Instagram. She finishes up that beautiful last tip, and then she prepares to send him through the back door. But wait. Where does that go? Let's take a look. It's not actually a door, but rather a canvas banner that the sheep can push against without being hurt. When the sheep slide down the ramp, there is a pen assistant to catch them and mark them with the number of the order in which they were shorn. 
This helps to avoid confusion when the pen judges come back and judge the sheep. When the shearing is complete, the judging begins. They carefully examine both sides of the sheep and then roll it onto its rump to also examine the belly. These judges are looking for anything left on the sheep or second cuts and nicks. For the final pen score, they take the total number of strokes and divide it by number of animals shorn. Now that I feel like I've covered all the bases, let's see how I did. I entered into the amateur division, which you're allowed to compete in until you win the whole thing, like Catherine did a couple years ago. Woo woo! The amateur division comprised of four competitors. Since there is enough room for four competitors on the floor at the same time, we only had one heat. Each pen had four sheep in it, and they allowed us to have one practice sheep, which I was extremely grateful for. Every pen had one ram lamb. I chose to do mine first because he looked to be the most difficult shearing. He had a lot of fiber on his legs, and I knew that that was a weakness for me, so I went ahead and got him out of the way. Plus, nobody wants to have to look out for extra dangly bits while you're shearing in a competition, so it was best if I just did him before I even started. Let me just say that I am incredibly thankful for this practice sheep. A few years ago when I was competing at this competition, I began by grabbing my first sheep and putting it between my legs wrong. I've shorn thousands of sheep and never made that mistake before, but wouldn't you know, I do it on the first sheep of a competition that I've never tried before in my life. Shearing this little lamb gave me enough confidence to enter into my first heat without all the jitters and nerves that I had the year before. Because of some technical difficulties in the movement of judges, I don't have the full video of my practice sheet. But who cares about that? Let's just jump into the real thing. And we're off. Catherine sets up the sheep perfectly so I can easily remove it from the pen and set it up to begin removing the belly. Catherine and I had discussed which sheep to pull out first and last. I decided to begin with the sheep that looked the most average, easy shearing. Not the easiest shearing one, I saved that one for last so that I could really crank up my speed. But this was a nice sheep to where I could get my rhythm, feel my flow, work out my nerves, and not struggle too much and get disheartened. This sheep proved to be perfect. I was able to clean off that leg pretty well and really find my rhythm as I move into the hip. I round that tail head and move up to clean off the top knot. Then a smooth transition to up the neck, which can be the most difficult part. As you remember from the demo video, lots of second cuts are definitely available here. I'm certain that I have created some second cuts, but I have to keep going and moving forward so that I don't get in my head about all the mistakes I've already made. Just keep going and try to clean it up as I move. While I move through the long blows into the last side, I will take a moment to apologize for that dirt spot on my butt. Yes, I do know it's there. No, I didn't know the day of but it is from sitting on the ground and watching the shearing competition. I mean, who would have thought that black pants would be so telling? But anyways, it seems that I have now made it to my last side and I'm in the last couple of blows on this sheep. Now I'm just trying to maintain my pace and ramp up my quality as I finish up here. The sheep gets a little uncomfortable, so I pause and wait for it to calm down before finishing. I need her little leg to be straight, so I put some pressure on her knee until she relaxes and gives in. Now I can safely finish that leg up and get her on her way. Notice on the left side of the screen, the gentleman at the stand next to me is right behind me. At this point, I realize I'm in the lead for time, but I really need to make sure that my quality is on point. As I go to grab my next sheep, disaster almost strikes. Let's rewatch that. As soon as that last sheep sees the door, he makes a run for it, but luckily Catherine catches him just in time! She definitely earns the best pen assistant award, because if that sheep would have gotten out, it would have been a major deduction in points for me. No loose sheep on the floor, rule number one. Now that that's over, back to shearing sheep. This girl right here really wasn't a bad sheep to shear, but her wool was super short and kind of tight, which I assumed would be a more difficult shear. She was more difficult than the first one, but I wouldn't say that she was necessarily a really bad or sticky sheep. Once I get past that belly and into the leg, it's really pretty smooth shearing. It is slowing me down a bit because of how tight her wool is. I want to make sure that I don't pull any skin up and nick her. I would like to take a moment to thank my wife for all the hard work she put into filming this. The camera on the right is set up on a tripod and one of our friends is monitoring it to make sure it's not in anybody's way. But as you can see, the view is very obstructed. Incredibly, she had the forethought to stand in this little crevice here so that we could capture some footage and everybody could see what's going on the entire time. Thanks, Dee. Now that I've gotten to the neck and the head area, I can see just how tight that wool is, and it's really giving me fits when it comes to that shoulder and not leaving second cuts. 
This has been a little disadvantageous because the person behind me, as you can see, is quickly catching up and blowing past me. I will say that I was certainly unaware that my speed was slowing down enough for others to catch me at this point because I was just in the zone trying to get through what I could of this really tight wooled sheep. I will admit that I feel like I had a little bit of advantage with Catherine and my pen. She was giving me tons of encouragement and honestly it's what I needed to hear to keep going and finish strong. While I clean up the last side of this sheep with my last couple of blows, I am trying to focus on quality and I'm trying not to let it phase me that the person beside me is already bringing out their next sheep. I just know that I've got to finish mine and make it as clean as possible, especially paying attention to those socks which I'm not used to. Now that she's basically done, I'm ready to send her down the chute and grab my next one, which I've planned to be the easiest shearing sheep. Although I've picked her to be the easiest shearing sheep in the pen, that doesn't mean she will be. When I put her into position, there's always a chance that she is worked up from when she tried to escape earlier. But right now, I just need to focus on removing a very clean belly. I will admit that being the fastest on the board was definitely my goal. Realizing that I had left some second cuts on there, I knew that my quality would probably not win the whole competition. There were two things I was focusing on, moving quickly and making sure not to nick this sheep. I hadn't noticed any nicks on the previous sheep that I sheared, so I wanted to make sure that I could finish strong. With an incredibly smooth transition to up the neck, I start blowing and going. I am so happy to see that this is in fact an easy shearing sheep, and it is exactly what I needed at this point. I feel super confident very comfortable in my movements and we are making some ground. In about 40 seconds from where we began, we're already into the long blows. I'm feeling really good, I just need to remember to stay relaxed because if I get worked up, the sheep will get worked up. And if the sheep gets worked up, I could totally lose the whole thing and any progress that I may have made or catching up that I've done in just this one sheep. So I take a couple deep breaths to reduce my energy and make sure that I'm pushing myself to produce the best quality and speed at the same time. Now, I did make a really good move and I made sure that the last sheep had no socks, so I don't have to worry about those silly things as I finish my last couple of swipes here. I do have to make sure that I round that tail head and don't leave any extra tags, and I am done! Woo! Now a wave to my grandparents and a smile for my wife. Quick high five for the Catherines and let's go see how we did! We're gonna do the fastest time, this is Catherine McCrow. <laughs> Wait, fourth place out of four people and you had the fastest time? Yep, you heard right. Remember, speed is just a small part of it, and quality is way more important. But that's okay, because I've achieved the goal of getting the fastest time, and now I know what I need to work on in order to improve for the years to come. Well, that's it for our shearing competition adventures. But if you liked the video, learned something, or maybe I've sparked your interest in shearing, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to us. Also, don't forget to activate that little bell so that whenever I get around to posting, you're the first to know. And if you want some more daily content, check us out on Instagram and TikTok under Right Choice Shearing. Welcome to the party. We hope you stick around.